Oh my god. God. Guys, the title of this video is not an exaggeration. I am not kidding when I say that Sony's PlayStation Showcase has just won E3 and they weren't even there. That should tell you how good this showcase was or it could tell you how bad E3 was this year. I know in the past I said I didn't want to do live reaction videos anymore, but honestly after seeing the showcase, I regret not doing a reaction video to it because th there were so many times during this presentation that I was just saying out loud, this looks so fucking good. There were so many games I saw that I was excited to see, a, a few that I was kind of not that intrigued by, but overall this show was just so good and, I'm, and there was a lot of cool stuff that they announced and new trailers we saw. So in this video, I wanna kinda just talk about the showcase and just go over my thoughts of everything they showed and just kinda talk about what I'm excited about. So let's just get started. So the show starts and there's a black screen and the logo for Lucasfilm's games pops up. So obviously Star Wars, and immediately I'm thinking to myself, oh shit, we might be getting a sequel to Jedi Fallen Order. That's so cool, that's not EA's logo, so what the hell is this? Oh! That's right, they're making a remake for Knights of the Old Republic. I never played the original Knights of the Old Republic, but I've heard a lot of people say it's a really good game, so I think it's really cool that they're remaking it. The next game to show, though, is what really got my attention. It's called Project Eve. This game just looks like it's right up my alley. I love hack and slash games. It's like my absolute favorite genre, and this game just looks incredible. It had some crazy hack and slash combat, it looked like it had a good variety of enemy types. I think they even showed up some cool boss fights. There also appear to be some sort of like alien angel type things. I don't know what that's about, but I just think that looks so fucking cool. This game to me looks like something I would absolutely love, and I think this could just be a really cool game. And I don't know about you guys, but for me, it kind of reminded me a little bit of Bayonetta. I don't know. I just got those. I just got like Bayonetta vibes from watching it. But yeah, no. Overall, I think that game looked fucking crazy. Like so, that looks so good. After that, we got gameplay for Tiny Tina's Wonderland. Now, I don't know if you guys know, but I love Borderlands. Um, I'm, I really enjoyed Borderlands 3 and Borderlands 2 when I played it. And Tiny Tina's Wonderland just looks like a really fun fantasy take on the Borderlands series. I, I know they technically did it in the past with one of their DLCs, but I think just making a whole spin-off game around it is a really good idea. I love some of the powers they showed. Like there was a guy that like had like energy arrows he shot. Uh, one guy threw a hammer and they called it back like it was fucking Thor's hammer, which I think is really cool. I love some of the environments they show, like some of the enemy enemy types. They also, for like a quick second, showed the characters you could play as, but I, I couldn't really tell for a minute if they were like new characters or not. I think they were, and that kind of would explain why they had powers we hadn't seen in the previous games. So I think that kind of confirms we're getting new playable characters in this game, which is actually cool, because I wasn't sure if we were just going to get to pick the old ones from the older games. And just being a Borderlands fan, I'm really excited for that. And it even got a release date. It is coming out March 25th of 2022, which is actually really soon because because there's only four months left of this year. What the fuck happened? After that, we got our new trailer for Forspoken. And this game looks so good. Like this game, honestly, like this might sound cliche at this point, but this game looks next gen as fuck. Like I freaking loved the graphics, the combat, the way you kind of just roam around, like how she was like flying off of buildings. I think even we saw she swung like a grappling hook at some point and just swung off things. The combat looks good. I The powers look incredible. Like there's one point in the trailer where we see her make water burst out of the ground and then she immediately freezes it. I don't know, it just, that kind of, that just looks super cool to me. And I also liked how in the trailer when you saw her running around buildings, she sounded super excited. And I just imagine like, that's how excited the player's gonna be to play it. Like, I don't know, I have nothing bad to say about this trailer because that trailer was just phenomenal and that game looks incredible. And it even got a release date. It's gonna be released in spring of 2022, which is a little bit of a ways off. We gotta wait till spring of next year, but that's not too far off. Um, still could get delayed. That is a possibility, um, but we'll see. And I, I definitely think that game looks like it's gonna be a hell of a lot of fun. After that, they showed a trailer for Rainbow Six Extraction. Um, we already saw this at last E3, and this one I'm not that interested in. I'm not really a big Rainbow Six fan. I've actually never played Rainbow Six. I mean, I'll be honest, this game does look like it could be fun. I don't know if I'll play it, 
it's not something I'm particularly interested in. I would say the only reason I would play that game if a bunch of my friends wanted to play it. But for me personally, I'm not really interested in playing that one. But if any of you guys are looking forward to this game, it's coming out January of 2022. So that's going to be very soon. After that, this was a nice surprise. They're remastering Alan Wake, um, which I've never played, but my buddy Austin loves this game and he has said nothing but good things about it. And it's actually coming out very soon. It's going to be out October 5th. And I might give it a shot. You know, I never played it and they did show in the trailer. It's also going to be out for PS4. So thankfully this one I'm going to be able to play. So I might give this one a shot, you know, just try it out. I've never played it. So yeah, I think it could be really cool. GTA 5 is coming to PlayStation 5 because of course it is. Look, that game, Skyrim and Minecraft just had to be on fucking everything. So I'm not surprised that GTA 5 got a trailer for, for the PlayStation 5. Uh, but it's going to be out in March 2022. After that, we got a trailer for a game that I honestly kind of forgot about. And I don't think we've seen a trailer for in a while. We got a new gameplay trailer for Ghostwire Tokyo. Um, I'm going to be honest, this game does look like a lot of fun. I, I'm i personally interested in it and I definitely want to try it out. But I still can't believe we didn't get a release date for this game. Like, how big is this game or how far into development are they? Because this game was announced a while ago. I, I think at least like... What was it like 2017 2018 I, I don't remember but I'll, I'll put the year on the screen but yeah it's been a while since this game was first announced and i just can't believe we haven't even got a release date yet now look look let me make this absolutely clear that i don't mean that as in like hurry up and finish this game i never want any developers to rush a game that they're making if they're taking their time with this to get it right by all means do that we've seen so many times in the past how rush games come out and they never come out good so th if there's no release date for this yet if they're still working on it that's fine i would rather a developer take a long time to get a game right rather than rush a game just to get it out the door and it ends up being a piece of pile of garbage after that we got a trailer for guardians of the galaxy i'll be honest i wasn't really sure if i was sold on this game but after seeing this trailer i'm a little more intrigued by it i i honestly think it looks like it could be fun also this trailer did confirm that there is going to be ship combat which i think is really cool and it's going to be coming out october 26th of 2021 i'll be honest i'm not super excited for it but i'm interested in trying it out because i i think it looks like it could be fun i mean the combat look cool the bosses look cool the game just i don't know it looks like an interesting game i'll definitely might give it a shot we got to see some gameplay for Vampire Masquerade Blood Hunt. Um, far as I know, this is like a battle royale for the Vampire Masquerade series, which I've honestly never played uh, any Vampire Masquerade games. So I know nothing about this series other than I assume there's vampires in it because, you know, it's in the title. So that's kind of fucking obvious. And while I'm not super into battle royales, I've played some, but I'm, I'm not like a big fan of them. In fact, I kind of get a little annoyed when I see a game announces a battle royale mode for it because that just seems like what everyone's trying to do now. I'll be honest, though, this one looks kind of fun. I mean, we saw different characters and like different abilities they had. One guy had like a... a teleport thing one guy had like a super jump and this game looks r really vertical and kind of wide open in a way which i mean it's a battle royale so it's gonna have a big map but i don't know just the the verticality of the game and like the movement options they had the game looked like it could be a really fun fast-paced battle royale and something about it just looked interesting to me you know and also i thought this was kind of cool like in every battle royale game there's like a circle closing in on the map that if, that will kill you if you're uh outside of it and in this trailer, they show people kind of in the circle shooting at the vampires you play as, which I'm going to just assume those are like vampire hunters or something. I don't I don't know the game, so I could be completely wrong. But I just think that's a really cool idea for a closing circle in a battle royale. I'll just have it be a bunch of vampire hunters closing in on you. I actually think that's a really nice touch to it. I kind of like that. We got yet another trailer for Deathloop. Now, look, this game, in my opinion, has gotten so many goddamn trailers. Like, we get it. We know this guy's stuck in a time loop. You got to kill eight people and he's got wants to get out. And this girl keeps killing him. I don't know. I just feel like this game has gotten so many trailers, like to the point where it's kind of ridiculous. Putting that aside, though, I still think this game looks like it could be really cool. I mean, I love Arcane Studios. I love Dishonors. And this game just looks like a sort of a different take on that kind of style of gameplay. So I'm definitely intrigued by it. And this game's actually coming out really soon. Soon. it's gonna be out september 14th which is actually in a few days so yeah definitely uh, looks like a cool game in my opinion after that i don't know what the hell they showed next it, it, it's something called kid amnesia i don't even know how you're supposed to pronounce this so i'm just gonna call it kid amnesia and it, it was just a brief cinematic trailer apparently radiohead's involved somehow and i don't know i've never heard of this this is com like completely new to me when i was watching this trailer and i saw like that pyramid thing in the middle 
I immediately thought Silent Hill because let me explain. I never played Silent Hill, but my friends have shown me Pyramid Head, and I think first of all, Pyramid Head looks so fucking cool. And I saw the big pyramid, and I'm like, oh, maybe that's referencing Pyramid Head. And I heard rumors that there might be a Silent Hill remake, so I was like, oh, maybe this is the Silent Hill remake that's been rumored. And it's not, and I don't know what the fuck this is. They said it coming in November, so maybe we'll see more on it really soon, but whatever this game is, I have no idea, and I I'm not excited for it, because like I said, I, I don't know what it is. I know I said this in my last E3 video, but if you're going to show me a cinematic trailer for a franchise I've never heard of, I can't get excited, so... This is just another one of the games they showed where I'm like, okay, I don't know what this is, but okay. After that, they showed a game called Tichia. Now, at first, I wasn't really into this game. This didn't look like my kind of thing. And then they showed gameplay, and right off the bat, the game looked absolutely beautiful. I mean, the water looked really good. The environments looked really good. But still wasn't my thing. It kind of, to me, looked like just a lighthearted, fun experience, which isn't my thing. I'm more into, like, over-the-top action games, I'm sure you know. But then this happens. Yeah, she basically, like, possessed animals, and that reminded me a lot of Mario Odyssey, where how, like, you can throw your hat onto something and just kind of take over their bodies and use them and shit. But not only that, they she then jumps off a cliff and uses a paraglider, which immediately made me think of Breath of the Wild, and her being on that raft in the ocean gave me, like, Wind Waker vibes. At first, this game didn't really look like it was my thing, but now after seeing these weird combinations of Mario Odyssey, Breath of the Wild, and even Wind Waker, this looks like it could be a really cool game. I'm still not 100% sold on it but i'll keep my eye on it because it looks like it could be a lot of fun i also just want to throw this out there when i was watching the trailer and i saw her looking at the burn her eyes started glowing i honestly thought she was gonna make the bird explode <laughs> Uncharted 4 and Uncharted Lost Legacy are being remastered for the PS5 and PC, so if you want to play those games on PC, you absolutely can now, which I think is really cool. Oh shit, Insomniac Games. Oh my god, are we finally getting a sequel to Spider-Man? Holy shit, that's so cool. Wait, this doesn't look like Spider-Man. What the hell is this? Oh! Yeah, this really came out of left field for me. Insomniac Games, the same people that made the Spider-Man game for the PS4 a few years ago, is making a Wolverine game. Yeah, I was really surprised to see Insomniac Games is making a Wolverine game, but Insomniac Games did such a good job with the last Spider-Man game that I have no doubt in my mind that this Wolverine game will be nothing but amazing. Um, and I'm actually really looking forward to it. And also I was kind of talking about this with my friends. I was wondering if like, this is kind of implying that they might be trying to build their own Marvel Universe in Insomnia games because you know they have Spider-Man and now they're making Wolverine I even remember in the Spider-Man game when you go around the map You can find Doctor Strange's building from the movie and you could find the Avengers Tower Which I think kind of implies in a way that you know they're in the game kind of like they exist in the game You know what I mean because like their buildings are there, you know, I don't know if that's the route they're taking I think it would be really cool though and yeah, I'm just kind of interested to see how this all turns out I do think it's kind of weird though that now we're getting a lot of Marvel games being announced. I mean, we got the Guardians of the Galaxy game, we got Wolverine, we got this one like Avengers XCOM style game that I can't remember the name of, but I feel like now it's just a really weird time to be making all these Marvel games because, don't get me wrong, I love Marvel and this might be an unpopular opinion on my part, I'll be honest, but, but I feel like the hype for Marvel, at least for me personally, has really died down ever since Endgame. That's why I feel like it's a weird time. I feel like making a bunch of Marvel games would have been better when like, during the Infinity War saga, when like Marvel was at like peak hype in my opinion. So the fact that they're doing it now afterwards makes me feel like they kind of just missed out on a great opportunity. But still, these games all look like they could be a lot of fun. After that, they show Gran Turismo 7. Um, look, I'm not into racing games, so I didn't really much care for this one. So Insomniac really surprised me with that Wolverine trailer, but uh, thankfully, uh, <laughs> They knew what we really wanted. They showed us a new cinematic trailer for the next Spider-Man game. In the trailer, you see Miles and Peter just kind of fighting off a bunch of bad guys while there's this guy narrating over it. And I'm like 90% sure that voice was fucking Craven. I mean, the accent reminded me of Craven. Some of the lines he was saying, like how he's looking for a challenge, reminded me a lot of Craven. If he's in that game, it's gonna be really cool. And I also know that Craven. I think was a member of the Sinister Six, which is like, I'm sure everyone knows, but if you don't, it was like a group of Spider-Man villains. And I think if I remember correctly, at the end of Spider-Man, there was a cutscene where Doc Ock was talking to 
it was, I think it might have been Vulture or something, one of the other members of Sinister Six in prison. Hi, uh, future me here. Just making a quick editor's note. Uh, I was completely wrong with remembering uh, how the game ended, and I was actually confusing it with the post credit scene from Spider-Man Homecoming, so that's my bad. However, I did Google it, and both Doc Ock and Kraven are members of the Sinister Six, so I still think it's possible they could all appear, but yeah, I just wanted to kind of add this in and correct myself, so sorry about that, guys. I don't know, maybe we'll get to see the Sinister Six in the next game. I keep saying that wrong, I'm sorry, but I think that would be really cool. But, um... This next part is what really, really got me excited, and uh, I'll, I'll just show you. Will one of you finally give me what I desire? Yes. We will. Yeah, we got to see fucking Venom. Look, I mean, it, we knew he was coming. It was obvious. It was like foreshadowed at the end of the last game. But the fact that we just got to see what he looks like and also hear what he looks like is what got me excited because I freaking love Venom. He sounds really good. He looks really good. My overall first impressions of how they made Venom in this game just looks incredible. Even though we got like a short glimpse of him, I just think they did a good job with how his voice sounds and so far with how he looks. I can't wait to see him in gameplay. And I have a lot of questions for this game now, like, we see Peter and Miles, so is it going to be co-op? Is it going to be like an AI partner? Are there going to be missions where you play as Peter and missions where you play as Miles that just kind of swaps back and forth? Also, I doubt they're going to do this, but I think this would be really cool. Before the last Spider-Man game, my favorite Spider-Man I played was Ultimate Spider-Man. I played that years ago on the GameCube when I was a kid. And in that game, you could actually play as Venom. You could play as Spider-Man and then some missions you would play as Venom. So I'm wondering if this game we're going to get to play as Venom, which I think that would be so fucking cool. I would actually love that also i'm sure they're going to do this but i just want to ask anyway since venom's in the game can we please have the black spider-man suit in the next game can that be an unlockable thing like i don't know if that's already confirmed or not but I, i'm sure it's going to be in there since venom's in the game but still i just oh i want the black spider-man suit so bad yeah i'm overall just really excited for this game because i just fucking love spider-man i love venom and i i this this trailer even though it was cinematic no gameplay i still got absolutely hyped for it and what really surprised me is we got not really a release date, more like a release year. It's going to be out in 2023, which is, you know, still a ways off. That's a long way away. Yeah, really surprised we got like a release year in this trailer. That, that I, thought, I think that's super cool. And finally, they showed a new trailer for God of War Ragnarok. Now, some of you might be mad at me for this, but as soon as I saw Kratos on the screen, I immediately skipped the trailer and I can explain why. Just hear me out. I still haven't finished the previous God of War. And so my fear was I was worried that this trailer would spoil that game because I still need to finish it. So unfortunately I had to skip it. I basically all I did was just kind of fast forward to the when the title of the game showed up because I want to see if there was a, a release date. And still there's no release date for this game, which honestly I'm okay with that because that means I have time to finish the previous God of War, which I still need to do. I, I sorry it took me so long to finish that. And to kind of make up for it, for skipping this trailer and not being able to talk about it on the show, when I finish God of War, the finale episode of that playthrough, I will record a live reaction to this trailer that I skipped and then add it to the end of that finale so you can see my reaction to that trailer and just give my overall general thoughts and predictions for uh, that trailer. I'm really sorry I couldn't talk about it here, but I just I didn't want to watch it and get spoiled on a game I still have yet to finish. But I'll make it up to y'all uh, and react to it add, and add that to the end of the God of War finale when that gets uploaded. And that was everything. A lot of really cool games, a lot of announcements that just really got me excited. I think the biggest one was Spider-Man 2. I can't wait to play that. The Wolverine game just came out of left field for me and that game just, I, I think because Insomnia did such a good job with Spider-Man, that game's gonna be really good. Project Eve was just wow. That game, like that looks like my kind of game. I'm really excited to play that. The one downside to all this though is that some some of these are only gonna be on PS5 and I still don't have one, God damn it. And I mean, I know it's not just me, a lot of people don't have PS5s right now and I'm not gonna get into the whole situation. I think everyone knows the deal by now, you know, scalpers, pandemic, a global semiconductor shortages. Like PS5s are just really hard to get right now and that just, that just means that 
I'm probably not going to be able to play a lot of these games when they come out. And unfortunately, it's taken a lot longer than I thought it would. I mean, the new consoles have been out for almost a year now, and they're still not that available for everyone, which kind of sucks. But, you know, I like to think nothing lasts forever, and one day in the future, they'll be available. And, you know, another way I could look at it is whenever, whenever I do get PS5, I now have a whole bunch of games I could play on it. You know, just try to add a positive spin to things, you know? But that's going to be it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Leave a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe for more of my content. And let me know down in the comments what you thought of PlayStation Showcase. You know, what games were you excited to see? What you thought, what did you think looked really cool? And I'll see you next time.